Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Maybe like this. A full wrap. <laughs> yes, that's quite nice actually, isn't it? Maybe a bit like this. Oh. <laughs> oh, actually, we could go. Th that looks rather lovely, doesn't it? So lots of different ways you can wear it. Lovely and warm, very lightweight and diaphanous, very soft, completely reversible. What you want is drape and flop. This is our new kit called the Toadstool Walk Cobweb Felt Scarf Kit that I'm wearing, ready-made. Uh, you, you can get it from our website, okay? And you will also need a bamboo mat and you will also need two lots of netting. And there's a bit of a bundle deal going on so you can save money if you need it all and I'll tell you about it again at the end. I come to you wearing my Toadstool Walk cobweb felt scarf and let us now watch how we make it. So if you've got one of these kits already and you're excited to make it, obviously you've got the instructions in the pack but hopefully after this video you'll feel very enthused and very confident about making it. Before we start, I just wanted to say how warm it is and how um, diaphanous it is. So what we're after making here is a double sided, very, very cobwebby thin piece of felt. So tempting though it may be to use all of the wool in the pack, you probably won't need it all. And um, what often happens is people who've never made cobweb felt before often use too much wool. So whenever I'm teaching cobweb felt scarf making, I always get everyone to make a little sample first. So that's what we're gonna to do today as well. We're gonna make a little sample so that you can see how very little wool is used. In your pack, you'll see that you've got some of the hand-dyed wool tops, and of course you've got some of the, the olive green single color that you're going to put around it. And then you've got some other colors of merino wool tops as well for the toadstools and so on. Um, What's interesting here is that we're doing it double-sided. So we're going to lay down the designs first, of the toad, sort of all the designs actually, the toadstools and the flowers using all the lovely different colours. And then we're going to infill around it. So once the scarf is made, it'll be exactly the same from both sides, which is really, really important because when you're wearing a scarf, you don't want to like make sure that you've got the right side showing. So ordinarily, if you were making a piece of felt, you'd have a colour and put design on top. But of course, you'd only be able to see that design from one side. So the way we're going to do it by laying down these designs first and then infilling around them means you can see the design exactly the same from both sides. Now, in terms of sizing, our bamboo mat's quite big, so it's about nearly 180 centimetres long. So you will use the full length of that and you're going to need two pieces of netting each two metres long. So basically you're going to have the mat, then you're going to have a piece of netting, then you're going to lay out of all of the wool for your scarf, then another piece of netting will go on top and then you're going to obviously spray it with soapy water and so on. I'll go through all of that. And then you're going to roll it up and you're going to keep rolling it, keep spraying it, keep rolling it, keep spraying it and then um, rinsing it and so on until it becomes a piece of felt. Um, but in terms of sizing, it should, you know, if, if it starts off at about 180 long, it'll probably end up shrinking about, about 15 to 20%. So it will probably end up being about 150 by about 42, I think mine is. Um, and also you can probably see when you look at the pictures of mine, it's got lovely wavy, uh, scallopy sort of edges to it, which I love. And um, obviously you can do that too. I mean, you can make straight edges if you want to, but it's actually much harder to keep them straight. Um, and I just think it sort of adds to like the organic nature of the scarf in the first place, if you just do lovely wavy edges. So it's almost like you're laying out your design elements first, all the way down the mat for the scarf, in filling it and then creating that edge as you infill with the, the dark green around it. And then it's ready to make into the felt. So when we're doing our sample piece, I'll do that with you now. Um, and once you've got the hang of that and you've made your sample piece, you'll be more than ready to go ahead and just make the scarf because you'll understand how little wool you need to use. You'll understand the process. You'll understand exactly how it all works. And there's, don't worry, there's enough in the pack for you to do that. So we're just talking about making a little square like this first. And I know it's laborious because you, you, you just want to get on with the scarf, but just do it. 
just do just do the sample piece first and, and you'll thank me because you'll completely understand and you'll feel way way more confident about making the scarf okay so let's get to it okay so let's lay out our little sample piece just here on a piece of netting I've just actually got mine on a little bamboo mat, but you can just use a small part of your larger bamboo mat. It doesn't make any difference, okay? So I'm gonna start off just by using maybe a bit of this hand-dyed wool top. You've got two different sorts of hand-dyed wool top. One's gonna to be slightly more rainbowy, one's gonna be a bit darker, but you can really choose the bits that you like and choose the bits that you'd like to use. Um, so I'm just gonna pull off a little bit of this, I think, and just gonna make it into a little swirl here in the middle. Let's start over here in the corner. And I'm just gonna make like a little swirly whirly, and maybe I'll just put a little bit of another color around it. So now I'll take a little bit of the greeny color, and I'm just going to elongate it. Can you see how very little I'm using? And then I'm just going to pop that around and make a little swirl like so and just make sure that the two colours are butting up together okay and then I'm just going to pull a bit of that off and I might just make it into a little centre piece and pop it in the middle okay so there's a little swirl okay and then I'm also just going to show you how to make the toadstool don't be afraid by the toads of the toadstool, okay, because the toadstool is really very easy. We're just going to start off with the toadstool top, something like that, and just put the bare bones of it out to start with. You can always add more wool if you need to. You can tuck a little bit under like that. We'll just make the, the stem, make the stem nice and big, and then we can put some more colours. I was actually using some of the other colours from the hand dyed as well in the stem of, of some of the bits of the toadstool. Remember with these tiny bits of wool, you can break them apart. You can literally just use a few tiny, tiny strands of the toads, of the, uh, of the color that you need, okay? And then maybe take the darker red and just take some tiny bits of that and we can just put them underneath like that to add a little bit of shading to the toadstool and then I think you've got some pink included as well I can't quite remember what I did with that now I think I used some of the pink in the designs but you might want to add some onto the toadstool as well and then maybe you want to think about just making it a little bit um, higher up at the top let's just take another little bit so you can see how you can build it up, okay, and add little bits to it and just make sure that they're all butting up together or laid out over one another. And then for the spots, I just took tiny, tiny, tiny bits like this. Don't uh, roll them together between your fingers too much. Don't turn them into a little ball, but you can certainly shape them a little bit and then turn and just get rid of like excess ends and then do that let's just do another one over the other side okay so that a bit like that okay but what you need to remember with all of these design elements that you're going to be putting into your scarf is that you're going to see them from both sides so I'm just going to flip that over and I'm just going to think okay well do I want to add anything maybe I will add just a tiny bit of this um, cerise into the swirl of that, for example, because you're going to be seeing it from both sides. So the same with the toadstool. You don't need to necessarily pick the whole thing up and turn it over. You could just like pull it back and slip the white bits underneath. I'm just going to turn it over for ease now though. So this is what it's looking like from underneath. So this is what you'd see it as from the other side of the scarf, okay? So what I'm actually going to do is add a little bit more of, a, of the stem here. And then I'm also going to add a little bit more to the underside for the shading, because of course we can't see it because it's on the other side. So let's just add a little bit of the darker red on this side as well. And you can see how much wool I'm using. It's hardly any, okay? We don't want huge amounts of wool here because that will turn into felt that's too thick. So all the time I'm just pulling off really, really, really wispy, 
tiny, tiny wispy bits of wool, really, really important, especially with the things like the spots on the toadstools. You really don't want too much at all, otherwise it just won't bond together and you'll find that these little elements, you know, will kind of just fall off and won't become part of the felt. Okay, let's just pop another toadstool spot in place. So again, just pull off tiny, 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 tiny bit. And then manipulate it. That's a good word. We're not rolling it into a ball. It's still very, very fluffy and cobwebby and, and thin. All right. And then I'm just going to add another little bit of shading down the side of the... Actually, it was the other one I used. It was this one. Let's just get a tiny bit of this. It's just... There's so many gorgeous colours in these hand-dyed wool tops um, that you should find a bit of everything that you need, okay? And then obviously if you wanted to, let's just do a flower petal. Let's just do a single flower petal. Look at how much I'm using here. So I'm just choosing bits that I like, pulling off a tiny amount, and then I'm just shaping it into a leaf shape or a petal shape, okay? Just This is just an example for you. So this is your just your, your sample piece, okay? Just pulling off bits of colour that I like from the hand dyed wool tops, okay? And then just shaping them into the shapes that I need. So we've got a toadstool. <laughs> we've got a couple of little design elements there. Again, remember to look at it from the other side. Is it okay, okay from the other side? Do you want to add in, I don't know, let's add in a little bit of this blue from the side here. So you can pull it from the side. You can, oops, sorry, you can't see. So if I wanted to add in, I don't know, little bit of this green maybe for example you can just pull it from the side like that it doesn't need to necessarily come from the end just take it from wherever you want it and then I could just lay that down onto there so really really lovely to use this hand dyed uh, wool because you've got so many different colours within it um, but just be mindful that you're just not using too much of it okay and that you're happy with how it looks from both sides. So that's one of the most important bits of this, okay? Um, so once you're happy with that, then we're gonna start using the dark green and we're going to infill around it, okay? So when we're using the dark green, we want to be taking off really, really small amounts again, okay? So it's really, really, really cobwebby and fine. And we're gonna start laying those around these design elements. So obviously this is just, a, this This is a sample, okay? So let's not get too kind of carried away um, with how big this is. But I, what I want to get across is how um, all of the uh, wool that you're using for your scarf or, and your sample needs to be butting up and touching, all right? So all of the design elements need to touch each other so you can't leave gaps, all right? Because, well, essentially that would end up as a hole. You don't want a hole in your scarf. So we're just going to carry on filling this in. So let's say that that's our, our finished sample piece, okay? Um, what you want to make sure is that you can just about see the netting through underneath, okay? So you know that you haven't put too much wool tops down and it's not going to be too thick when you um, turn it into felt, okay? So it's really, really fine. OK, and that you want both all your design elements to be the same from both sides and you can just about see the netting. But more, most importantly, that it's all touching so that you haven't got any holes and none of this is going to be like a gaping hole and like hang apart. And of course, when this is felted, it's going to, um, by the nature of the beast, it is going to just shrink slightly and compact slightly and therefore become slightly thicker 
when it's felted. I'm back. I know this is a continuation of the same video, but basically it's the next day. You wouldn't know though, um, <laughs> because I'm wearing the same outfit, taking the dog for a haircut, come back, did a little bit of accountancy for the business, cooked dinner, went to sleep, woke up, here I am. <laughs> right, so back to your cobweb felt sample. So you are now ready to turn this into an actual piece of cobweb felt. All you need is some lukewarm water and about a dessert spoonful or a tablespoonful of washing up liquid. Now, I think in the States that might be called washing up detergent, you know, the stuff you use when you're cleaning the plates at the sink, that, with some water, okay? So that's your basic liquid that you're going to use to spray onto your little sample that you've just made. And the beauty of this is that there is no rubbing. You are just going to be rolling your felt. So how magnificent is that, if nothing else? So basically what happens is, as you're rolling it in the bamboo mat, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, the friction from the bamboo mat and the soap and the water start to make the fibres felt together in the usual way that fibres felt together. So after you've rolled it for about 500 times or so, quite a lot, maybe stick on a, you know, a lovely audio book or some music or have something going on in the background or just drift off. Um, so after you've done about 500 of those, then you can open it up have a look, see what's going on. If necessary, add more of the soapy water, but I'm gonna show you now how to roll it. And then eventually you can get to the point where you put it under the tap, under the sink, because it's a proper piece of cobweb felt fabric. Let's continue. Okay, so as you can see, we're ready to go. I've got my bottle of soapy water that I was just showing you. So I'm now going to start to spray that on top. You can see the soapy water. It's scary when you do this. <laughs> you think, oh no, I don't want to ruin it. But don't worry, you won't ruin it. And it's protected. So I'd say that's probably about enough. You want to get it to the point where it's pretty much going to be wet all the way through. And then you're going to put more netting over the top of that. So don't forget that step. Okay, now when I just smooth that down with my hands, I can kind of get a general sense of how wet, how wet that is. Okay, so I might just add a little bit more, add a little bit more if necessary. You can, if you want to, add a little bit of um, actual bar of soap at this point if you wanted to but you just need that wetness and that soapiness there okay if it's really really soapy you can peel back the net and you can adjust things although I wouldn't tend to do that too much with cobweb felt just because of the nature of it it's so delicate but let me just show you how you can very very carefully once it's wet and soapy, soapy do that so say, for example, I don't know, I wanted to adjust something or I could see it wasn't buttered up or I've got a few stray hairs going in the wrong place. You can adjust it if you want to. All right. So I'm just going to pop that back over the shop. And remember, this is just a sample piece, though. So essentially, it really shouldn't matter about that at all. Right. I'm just going to turn it round and get my life in order so that I can explain to you now how to roll it up and how to roll it together. So I've got quite a large piece of netting here, which I probably didn't need. But anyway, there we go. So the way to roll this up. OK, let me just get it into shot for you. So we're going to roll it up as tightly as you possibly can. This needs to be really, really tight. OK, and then we just obviously got our felt there encased between the netting. Right, so I'm gonna go pretty much to the end of my mat there. I know my, my netting's huge, ignore that. And then I'm rolling it back and forth like this. And you can hear, if I stop talking for a second, the bamboo sort of pushing against itself, okay? So it's really, really difficult to do this, or it's made much more difficult to do this if it's really like sloppily rolled up. It's much, much, much more difficult. So really, really important. Let me just show you again. Let's just start right from the beginning. So just, if you get 
any excess in there, just roll it up with it, it doesn't matter. But this is the important bit here, like the core of it, just get it really, really tight here and really, really tight as you roll the thing up. And obviously when you're doing your great big long scarf, this is gonna be much, much bigger, but it's just as important to keep it really, really tight, okay? And then it is just this. One, two, three, four. I won't do 500, <laughs> but I'm gonna to cut to me having done 500 so that we can have a look at it. 498, 499, 500. Seriously, I promise you I have done 500. Otherwise, <laughs> we wouldn't get the results we're after. All right, so here is my rolled piece. So now what happens is, let me turn it back around again so you can kind of see the full thing. Um, now what happens is you very, very carefully remove the netting from the fibres, okay? So you might find that some of your fibres have come through the netting and might make that quite difficult to do, in which case you can, like there's a few there, I don't know if you can see, in which case you can kind of pull them off if that's happened a lot. But if it's only happened a little bit, don't worry too much. So there might be some resistance to when you're pulling the net back here because of that. And it basically it's just that the fibres have tried to felt themselves to the netting. So I'm just going to remove the netting this way. And it's probably a good idea at this point to just do the same thing with the, the bit underneath as well. You should be able to pull it off now as a piece of fabric, although it may still be quite delicate. So just be aware of that and don't sort of tug it too sharply. You just want to try and remove it if you can so it doesn't start to attach itself to the net too much. If it seems like too much of a task, don't worry, leave it on the net. Or if it starts to fall apart and you think, oh, it's not together enough, leave it on the net. OK, so there it is. Now what, what you need to do now is do a little test to see whether the fibres are still swaying around or whether they're fixed. And as you can probably see from mine, I'd say somewhere in the middle, some are fixed, but some are definitely still swaying around. So I know, and especially these spots, they're a case in point, so that's, that's something to watch out for. But you can see that we've got this fabric forming, it's just only halfway there, okay? So often what I will do now is add a bit more of the soapy water. And by the way, you can add this as you're rolling as well. If it starts to feel very dry, just spray it through the netting, okay? And then we will repeat the whole process. So we'll cover it over with the net again. Just press that down. So it should feel not dripping wet, but it should feel wet. So you shouldn't have any dry, springy areas. I'm just going to put some more over the top there like that. And like I said before, you can get a bar of soap and add that over the top as well to make it more soapy because that does speed things up in terms of felting. OK, and then exactly the same thing again. So I'm going to just turn it round and do a whole another 500. Put the audio book back on or whatever you're listening to. And by the way, if you want to, you can just, if you've got a few stray edges there and you just want to tidy those up a bit, please do at that point, because that will give you a, ni a neater edge when it's finished. Although it should do that anyway, it should sort of come together anyway. But if you've got some obviously straggly areas, you can tidy them up. So I'm just gonna roll another 500. Okay, here's my second lot of 500. Okay, so I would say on average, it's probably two lots of 500 that you're going to need to do. All right, so let me just turn it around again so we can see it the right way up. Okay, so I'm hoping now this will be fixed together enough for me to now go and rinse this. So the difference being now when I rub my hand over it, can you see that the design elements are fixed? They're not swimming around and swaying around like before. So let me just peel this now off the back, just very gently still, okay? Be very gentle with it. And there's my little sample piece. So the next thing to do for this now is to go and take it to the sink I'm going to just gently like fold it up. So don't be afraid of that, but just have the water running and just show it the water a few times, okay? And then 
uh, it's like, and then gently wring it, okay? And then you, we're gonna bring it back and we're gonna roll it without the, uh, the netting, okay? So we're gonna go to the sink, we're going to rinse it very gently, lukewarm water, just with, not immersing it, just with the tap running. And then we're going to come back and we're gonna roll it in the bamboo mat without the netting. See you in a mo. Okay, so I'm back from the sink. I've rinsed all of the soap out. I've given it a ring, so it's not soaking wet. Obviously it's still wet. But now I'm going to roll this again. Let's just get you to the right point. Um, just r r straight into the mat, okay? And this is going to cause it to sort of felt more quickly because it's not got the um, netting on it and it will shrink in the direction you're rolling it in. It's very important to remember this now. So when you do your scarf and you get to the point where you are rolling it without the netting anymore and it's all fixed together, you can fold it up and keep changing the direction you're rolling it in and it will shrink in the direction you're rolling it in. So just do like 20 to start with. So the fact that I've been rolling it in this direction makes it shrink this way, okay? So I'm gonna turn it round now. So keep turning it. So in my, in my instructions, I think I say, rotate it 90 degrees clockwise each time. But just bring you to the end of my mat, and then I'm going to do the same again. And I'm going to go round in each direction on both sides. <laughs> Okay, so I've been 20, 20 rolls in each direction on both sides. Here's my little cob. I'm just going to give it a final rinse. I'm going to give the mat a rinse as well so it's not soapy. I'm going to give it a final roll and then um, I might just quickly try and dry it so I can show it to you finished. Hi guys, so here is my finished cute little felt sample. As you can see, he's floppy, he's drapey. And obviously, as the felting process has happened, he's got slightly smaller and has shrunk and therefore is nice and diaphanous and not too thick, but still sort of together enough not to fall apart with no holes. So as long as you follow my advice, make sure that you can just about see the netting underneath your wool tops. Make sure there's no gaps and everything's butting up nicely. As it shrinks, when it felts, you should end up with just about the right amount of wool. But I do thoroughly recommend doing this little felt sample first. You can see the lovely wavy edges and how it's got a, like a, an organic finish to the edges, which I think is really gorgeous as well. So um, I would really recommend that you make the sample first. However, obviously now you're all desperate to actually make the scarf. All right, so let me just run through what you're gonna do. You're gonna use your giant mat, okay, which is a full 180 by 60. Use the whole length of it, okay? So when you're laying out your felt scarf, obviously it's gonna shrink a little bit, but use as much of the length as you can, nearly all of the width, but look at the aspect ratio and make sure it looks like the shape and the size that you want and that you like. And so you're laying this down first, obviously on onto the table, and then you're going to put your first piece of big mat um, netting on top of your mat. So we've got mat, we've got net, and then you're going to start to lay out all of those design elements. So you're going to use your hand dyed for the flowers, and then you're going to do your toadstools. If I just show you this picture here, actually, on, on my instructions, you can see how I laid out the five flowers first, just to give me a sort of sense of proportion of how long it was going to be and where it was all going to sit. And then I put the toadstools, one, two, three. And then I sort of laid out the in-betweeny bits, there's little coils and little smaller flowers and little leafy bits. And just like get a really good, nice full amount of decoration, obviously viewed from both sides. And then you're going to do your infill and leave your lovely curly edges.
okay and once you've got that all laid out then you're going to put your other big piece of netting over the top of that oh no you're going to spray it down first sorry spray 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 then your other piece of netting then more spraying then make sure it's all completely wet all the way through rub a bar of soap on top if necessary it speeds the whole thing up especially when you're doing a nice big scarf because it is going to be taking you slightly longer it's a longer process if you can't do it all in one day you can leave it but don't leave it for too long is what i would say so if you're going to leave it leave it in the open air don't seal it up because it might go moldy and then obviously you would need to re-wet it down again um, when you come back to it okay so you don't need to do it all in one day but try to if you can because i just think um, i just think it's a it, it, it's easier in a way if you do do it like a continuous process so you've laid out your scarf you've sprayed it down with your soapy water you've got your next piece of netting on top more soapy water spray 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 you don't want it dripping wet but get it wet all the way through bar of soap and then you're going to roll it up and you're going to start rolling put your music on okay so as we saw from making the little sample you uh you do your 500 you check it you probably do another 500 you check it depending on how you are at rolling and how it's gone as a process you might need to do a little bit more, but please, 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 please don't move on until it is fixed, properly fixed. Nothing's swaying about, nothing's moving. And then and only then can you take it to the sink, rinse it, and then you can come back and roll it just in the bamboo. And then, oh, the other thing is you can give this a light iron at the end if you want to, but do make sure your iron is isn't on burning hot just kind of middle of the road sometimes i iron over a tea towel just to make sure i don't scorch anything or ruin anything you know if there's something stuck to your iron oh you don't want that so just iron over a tea towel but you can iron it flat and it gives it a lovely finish and then there you are lovely warm drapeable it's so warm so soft so gorgeous um enjoy oh also perhaps you now want to buy the kit and you don't know where to get it useless aren't I so basically this is the kit okay it's a toadstool walk cobweb felt scarf kit as you can see it's got everything in it and then you'll also need the mat which is reusable obviously and you need two lots of knitting okay so we sell all of this on our website you can just buy the kit on its own or you can save about five pounds if you buy the mat as well or if you need it all you can save about seven or eight pounds I think so I'll do the link, but that's what you need and that's where you get it from. See you next time. Bye.